right, boys and girls, today we just went 5 and 0 oh playing Blue Hybrid in the Gaia Force Gaming Monday Night Playmat Locals. As I said, I play Blue Hybrid. I was trying out some new things. Um, you guys know in my side deck video, I talked a lot about Nemon. Well, today I decided to main deck the boy and let's just say he overperformed and I'm super excited to talk about this list. I think Blue Hybrid, even though yellow is like the best deck in the format is still well positioned. There's a ton of just early game advantage you can like guarantee thanks to the Tommy and Cory Kaku engine. And if you play a heavier count, of Magna as well as Koji Miyamoto, which we are playing in this deck. Uh, it can really help you out at getting that last little bit of aggression you need to close off, you know, longer, grindier games. If you guys are excited, I'll be showing you my main deck, egg deck, and side deck that I used for the event. It was Digifest rules, so Mulligan and side deck was included. If you guys are excited to see all this and gain any value from my thoughts, be sure to let me know by smashing that like button, subscribing to the channel, and uh, checking out my live streams that I do on Twitch. I go live every Tuesday afternoon and Sunday morning and plan on doing a ton of tournaments in between those days in the future, so be sure to follow me. Link is down below as always. With that said, let's hop into the deck, starting off with the eggs. Uh, it's blue. We always are gonna run four copies of Upamon for that nice aggressive draw that we need to filter through our deck and see our pieces. But we're also playing in this deck one copy of Kiaramon because against those grindier decks, having the fifth egg does come up. And what's really cool about Kiaramon specifically is thanks to cards like uh, Kumamon as well as uh, Koji Miyamoto, there's a lot of fun plays we can do and utilize thanks to this card for not only drawing before we attack, but also proccing memory gain effects like Koji. So I really like this lineup. Wouldn't change it for the world. Next, we have the main deck starting off, of course, with our white level threes. We have three copies of Bokomon, aka Brokomon, basically uh, the main engine for a lot of hybrid decks out there. But in this deck, he can be super dirty, allowing us to go into free Korikakus, followed by like second Korikakus. Uh, but the real spice of the day was two copies of Nemon. As I already showed you, we are playing Koji, but we're also playing Tommy in the main deck. So that gives us a total of six targets for Nemon. And I don't know, against people that play like memory blockers or against decks that have like pinpoint removal like red or green, Nemon has been an absolutely clutch card going first or going second because the second you play him, you get essentially six memory worth of resources. And then every turn after that, if you are like aggressive with your Korikakus or your Kumas or your Kendos and they get trashed, you can recycle your tamers. And now you can turn your body that you just lost into a body that can't be interacted with by your opponent being a tamer card. Uh, also, this allows you to evolve on top of Davis and then not lose anything if that hybrid dies. So let's say I evolve on top of Davis because it's my only tamer in play. I then attack with Kori Kakuman and the Kori Kakuman dies. Well, guess what? If I have Nemon in play, I just bring that Davis right back and I can use the effect again, guaranteeing my memory tamer and allowing me just to keep up the aggressive board presence without running the risk of playing into my opponent's removal. I really like Nemon. I think it's a super clutch card and should be experimented with more in hybrid decks. Moving on to the blue rookies, we have the hybrid package of four Strabimon, three BT6 Strabimon, three BT7 Strabimon, and then two Sayako and two Modokai Betamon. Big rookie lineup. Uh, this deck still always plays like a blue rookie rush deck. You will see later that we're not playing any copies of Hammer Spark. That's what enables us to play all these really cool clutch utility rookies. Uh, in order of best to worst, Strabi, and then BT7 Strabi, and then this Strabi. Uh, the only reason this card's in the deck is because he's 3k DP, a hybrid that you can put underneath Magna and gain memory with. That's really the only reason why uh, this card's in here, but there are some fun things you can do with this uh, in combination with Kuma, Kendo, and or uh, Korikaku. So it does come up sometimes, but most of the time you're evolving on your Tamers, and so his effect won't proc unless you're going from Koji into Magna. And then we're playing uh, two of each Floodgate, Basically, I'm not sure which Floodgate is more impactful at this current point in time. And given that we were allowed to play a side deck for this tournament, I figured splitting the count and then like 
running one and one of the other ones for when I need them in a specific matchup was the best way to go. And honestly, I really liked having both in the deck. They came up when they came up and they didn't come up when they didn't come up. Against like purple decks or against like green decks, like three and three of both are going in because they're just that clutch of cards. Moving on, we have personally my favorite part of the deck, the hybrid package. Uh, we have four copies of Korikaku and four copies of Kuma. If you guys have ever seen Blue Hybrid do anything, it's because of these two cards and how they work with Tommy Himi. Absolutely broken combo, being able to permanently freeze your opponent's board and just potentially attack. Every time a Kori Kakumon lives, it's just so much value for you. Uh, and then on top of that, we do play two copies of the new Kendo Garurumon and one copy of the original Kendo. So I am playing a heavier hybrid package in this deck and that's because I'm playing a very heavy tamer package and I wanna always have access to hybrids whenever I need them and being able to recycle these boys with Beowulf Mon or Magna is super clutch. If I had to like take a guess as to which one is worth cutting, I would say it's the OG Kendo because in situations where your opponent like let's say has a Floodgate or has a Bokomon that's like annoying, you usually don't wanna get rid of it because they can proc your Sora and Joes. <laughs> and so if you can just like have something with no sources just permanently chill on your opponent's board that you can just like stun every single turn and gain memory from with Sora Joe, it's kind of worth it. However, when you're fighting against like specifically uh, cute mon or random rookies that can just create a problem for you when it comes to chaining up, having access to Kendo is nice. So I am playing it in the deck, but this might find an actual home in the side deck, just so that way I can have some room for other tech cards in the future. But overall, these core 10 are always staying. Up next, we've got just the only four level fives we play in four copies of Beowulf Mon. Again, the combos this enables with all of our hybrids and all of our tamers is insane. Being able to remove a body and then freeze another body thanks to Tommy Himi is just insane. Uh, the only other card I would consider playing as well as, as well as for Beowulf is the original Beowulf that has jamming and then cannot be swung into. It seems like a really good card against like the green decks, against like random plus security shenanigans that yellow decks can do. But if I'm honest with you, it's only super good if you can find room for like an ancient Garurumon package in this deck, which right now I have not found the room for. So just for Beowulf to me feels like the best option, but I could see myself increasing this number to like five or six level fives max. And finally rounding off the Digimon in the main deck, we have two copies of Magna Garuru, no Susanomon, no Bond of Friendship, no Azulongmon, just two copies of Magna going into this bad boy, whether it's for an extra source of removal whether it's on top of Koji for mega value and pressure, he's just the ultimate finisher we have in the deck. If our main game plan of attacking with rookies and champions and ultimates to gain a bunch of value and stun our opponent's board doesn't actually get us the win, but against any deck that isn't specifically called Yellow Hybrid, this engine right here is more than enough most of the time, and only against those really resilient decks or decks that can like that gain a bunch of blockers for some reason that we just can't stop, that's where Magna comes up super clutch. So you still have to play him, but you don't need him to win. But finally, uh, we're moving on to what makes this deck tick, the Tamers, and we're playing a lot of Tamers. We got four Tommy Himi, three Davis Motomiya, two Sora and Joe, and then two Koji Minamoto. First things first, Tommy, he's broken. He's the facilitator for the freezing lock that this deck can do. It's what allows you to beat any other aggro deck in the game. Davis and Sora are our main memory tamers. Because we can actually recycle these boys with Nemon. it's actually really easy to keep them in play, even if you evolve hybrids on top of them. That's the really cool thing about playing Nemon is that it enables you to evolve on top of these cards and not feel like you're losing out on anything because you're sacrificing your memory tamer for aggression and then finally to Koji I was eh about whether or not you should even play Koji because while Magna is again a really nice finisher option you almost never need him to win games but I will say that thanks again to the inclusion of Nemon having extra tamers that have inheritables so that way I can increase my turn one or turn two overall advantage play with Nemon was a pretty big deal and I think worth the test of Koji and I can honestly say 
Koji's broken. Uh, you can actually gain the memory off of his effect all the time, thanks to cards like Upamon, Beowulfmon, and even Magna himself, uh, which is super clutch. And making things unblockable does kind of come up sometimes against Jespon, uh, which is a big deal. Overall, this Tamer lineup feels great, and the only thing I would consider is maybe adding a third copy of Sora Joe for those yellow matchups. But once you see my side deck, I think it'll make sense why I'm not doing that. The only option cards we play are two copies of Howling Memboost and one copy of Ice Wall because these are basically extra ways that we can not lose to really wide boards. Uh, and of course, one ice wall, because if you play it, you're not gonna die. And given how much aggressive output this deck has, getting a free turn is like the difference between winning and losing, and so it's totally worth playing even at one. No Hammer Spark is questionable. It's definitely a thing I will probably retest again in the future, but if I'm honest with you, as long as you have a Davis in play, you should never need more memory than that, depending on what your board state is, because I don't ever see myself needing to constantly extend my plays to try to gain value. Uh, the only time Hammer Spark would be like super needed is if I need to go for like a double Kori Kaku play for some reason, while attacking with Tommy Himi's effect, so that way I can mega protect myself. But I think in those situations, a card like Howling Memory Boost is more than enough. Let me know your guys' take on whether Hammer Spark or no Hammer Spark in blue hybrid decks. Even though I didn't really use my side deck that much for this tournament, given the matchups I had, I will talk about like the mentality behind it. Uh, so we have one copy of Motokai Betamon, one copy of Sayako as extra floodgates that we need for when the matchups where they're more important come in handy. Against purple, both are going in. Against green, Motokai's coming out, Sayako's going in etc. Uh, we got one more Magna, two copies of Sora and Joe, and one copy of Koji. This is like my go-to package to put in against yellow decks, because Sora and Joe is godlike against yellow decks. They have, you know, TK and Kari, we have Sora and Joe. And against, like, their Bokomon spam, against, like, their Shine Greymons that you can eternally stun, it's just free value. One extra Koji and one extra Magna to give us even more aggressive potential in the late, late, late game. Super huge. And then finally, we have the super neat text in two copies of Avenge Kidmon and two more copies copies of Nemon. Oftentimes, if I'm fighting against the deck that has a bunch of memory stallers or memory blockers, I'll take out my Bokomons and I'll just put in two Nemon and one more Koji so that way I can have more, you know, grind game versus like outward burst potential. Uh, and it, it does come up. I think only one though is needed and I'll find room for like a different card. Uh, and then I never went into Avenge Kidmon because I never fought against purple, but against purple Avenge Kidmon is like sometimes an auto win button. If you can like put Lilith, uh, Lilith option cards back to the bottom of their deck, get a free removal out of it. If you fight against three Musketeers, which is running around in set seven, it's an auto win button. Uh, it's a card that I feel like in an unknown meta is worth it in your side deck. But if you're going to like a locals or a tournament where you kind of know no, no one's bringing purple, no one's bringing three muskies. There's no point in putting this in your side deck, but I wasn't sure of that going into this locals. And so I figured I may as well play it because it is a very valuable card overall. But yeah, guys, that's it for the entire blue hybrid like lineup of decks that I used to get first place today in the Gaia Force Gaming locals. I think this deck is super cracked and one of the best decks, if not probably the best hybrid deck in the game. Uh, for just consistently doing well in tournaments. So if you want to give this list a try, by all means, go ahead and do so. But believe it or not, there's actually a ton of different ways to play Blue Hybrid right now. And if I'm honest with you, there is no, like solved or correct way it's just a matter of like what you like and what you don't and if you haven't tried Nemon, hopefully this is the video that convinces you this card's really worth it to test because trust me it is overall though if you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe and i'll see y'all next time i've been your true champion steven please be sure to work hard rest easy and live well base